morning. Thank you so much for having me. Really honored to be here and to talk to you about Project Baseline. So today I'm going to really briefly go through the study design and what data is being collected. And then I'm going to spend most of my time talking about um, return of results for our participants. And you're going to see there's a lot of common themes for our approach and what we're hoping to do, um, very similar to what Eric was discussing about all of us. So Project Baseline is a collaboration between Duke, um, Stanford, Verily, and Google, and it's truly this merging of healthcare and technology that makes it possible. And it's our quest to map human health with unprecedented depth and precision. So what we're hoping to do is understand what does it mean to be healthy, and then follow people over time as they transition between health and disease. Because in those transitions is where we hope to identify early treatments for disease and then prevention for disease. So this is Judith. Judith is 83 years old. She has 10 grandchildren whom she texts with regularly. She's digitally savvy. She's an active member of her community, and she's a participant in Project Baseline. And much like all of us, we really believe that our participants have to be partners. Otherwise, we really won't be able to engage them and make this project successful over time. So we're going to be enrolling 10,000 people like Judith um, across the entire health spectrum, those that are healthy, those that are at risk for disease, and those like Judith, who's a breast cancer survivor that have disease. And again, we really hope to really um, get everybody represented at the US Census. We really have to have a diversity of population represented in racial, ethnic, age, gender. So these are the different components of the study that we'll be collecting. First, participants go onto a Verily created website um, where they can fill out a health portal where they're screened initially for cardiovascular disease and cancer, which are two of the focus areas for Project Baseline. And then a back-end algorithm helps us at the sites. The sites are, right now, there's two sites in North Carolina for Duke, here at Stanford and one in Los Angeles, and we hope to have t sites across the United States going forward. But they come on site then, we prioritize them, prioritize them for scheduling, they come on site for a comprehensive 12-hour, two-day visit. So we do an extremely deep dive into their health. We really do extensive measures, many imaging exams, an extensive blood draw, um, biospecimen collection, and all of this data is aggregated together into a database that was um, going to be robust for analytics in the future. And this visit happens on an annual basis for five total visits over four years. And then in the interim, what we feel is so important for this um, whole idea of precision health is this continuous monitoring, because we want to identify the transitions that are occurring between these in-person visits. So there's a Verily study watch that is um, collecting environmental and physiological measures. And then there's also a sleep sensor that goes underneath their mattress. And so that's, you know, tracks their tosses and turns and the quality of their sleep at night. And then finally, on their phones, they have an app. It's also on their computer. And that app's used for many different ways, in many different ways. They are able to um, complete annual, I'm um, sorry, quarterly surveys about diet, mood, and their overall health. And they also use that as a portal to get the results back. And also, really importantly, it's their opportunity to com communicate with us, to provide us with input when they're having changes in their health. So we can correlate some of those measures and the timing with some of the other data that's being collected. And all of, this, all of these different pieces of data come together into this giant database that, again, is going to be open for qualified researchers going forward, which is one of the things that I think is most exciting about this study as well, is, again, we're going to be able to answer many, many questions from researchers around the world that will be able to access it in the future. So empowering our participants with their own data, another theme from our earlier talk, is really critical, one of the goals of Project Baseline, because we know that if we don't share this six terabytes of data per year that are being collected with our participants, if we don't share back information, we really won't be able to engage them in the long term. And we know now in this digital age that having this data is so important to them. There's so much consumer spending on fitness trackers, 23andMe. In 2017, the um, number of people that had their DNA analyzed by a genetic genealogy test that doubled to 12 million. So people expect to have access to this data going forward. And also, you even have now access you know, from your own healthcare systems, and then Apple recently allowed you to now download your electronic health record to your phone. So we have a responsibility of sharing back data with our participants. So our guiding principle is that we want to um, return as much information as possible in an understandable format for, for our participants. Throughout this process, we're in, always engaging with our participants to let them know that this data was collected in the context of research and not clinical care, so it can't replace their clinical care, but we still want to be able to have them to have the power to have this data back. 
So the mechanics of returning results are extremely complicated. So we've had to develop many guiding principles. We've got a return of results committee that has representatives from genetics and bioethics and many scientists. And so we had to determine what can be returned. So again, we want to return as much as ethically possible. And we also want to um, return as like imaging results or blood results. And we're allowing people to opt in and opt out of receiving their genetic results. When should they be returned? So incidental findings has been an incredible challenge with this study. So we've developed flag levels of what is a critical finding that needs to be returned immediately and what's an important finding that's clinically actionable, but we may have a little bit more time because you know, participant safety is really the number one thing that we need to be concerned with. And then there's many, many results that we need to validate and analyze over time. So there'll be different time frames in which we can return these results. And how can they be meaningful? So we need to make sure that we've got user-friendly friendly results um, in reports that have lay language and resources so people understand how to compare what they're learning and they're in and out of ranges and what it is that these different measures should be informing them about. And then who should be involved? We need to allow them to bring these measures back to their um, referring or participating um, physicians so that they can talk to them and put that data in the context of their overall health. So there isn't really a one-size-fits-all solution. There's going to be differences based on interest, cognition, and self-empowerment. And so we are dynamically researching and studying and talking to our participants at all times. Um, our participants are so important to us, and they've been on our steering committee, and they're informing us at all times about what's important to them and what kind of data they want back and how what formats are meaningful to them. And then once we return data, we're also talking to them about what impact that's had on their own health care and on their lives. And Judith, she, um, much like many of our elder participants, had multiple incidental findings. She had a macular hole, so the PI called her to let her know that she needed to do an immediate follow-up, followed up with a retinologist, and she's doing really well. But she was so grateful and so committed to the study because she was able to get this information back. But this is Judith's husband, husband Israel, 85 years old, career, lifelong IBM, sent a man to the moon, and doesn't even use a cell phone, let alone a smartphone. So his ability to analyze and accept this data or access this data is going to be really different, and we need to be able to talk to all of our different targets and participants. So here's a few examples of things that have been returned so far. This is a CLIA routine lab that um, comes back in their portal. So before they access it, they get a reminder that this data was collected in the context of research, but it is a CLIA certified lab that did the anal analysis. And um, they received resources so that they understand the context of why this information was created, um, collected and what it might be analyzing and providing. And it also displays in and out of range measures so they can understand a little bit about what it means. And they can also print it out and take it to their physician. This is a personalized snowflake that was sent as a holiday card um, and developed by Verily back at the holiday times. The spokes of the snowflake um, indicate the number of hours that they slept per night, and the depth of the color is the number of steps that they took on average during the day as that was recorded from their study watch. And one of our participants, he didn't have a lot of spokes on his snowflake, and so he was really concerned, went and got a sleep test, and turned out that he had sleep apnea. So, you know, it's great to know that some of this limited data can be really actionable for our participants, but we need to also recognize that this is an observational study and giving this much information back is really going to, you know, change results over time. And so our scientific executive committee is really keeping that in mind as they analyze the back-end data. So overall, Project Baseline provides a continuous monitoring of our health with a really deep dive into all these different measures of health and looking at the linkages between all the different measures and then also for individuals and themselves over time. So just want to say thank you so much to our participants. If we don't put our participants in the center of this, we know that we can't be successful and we can't be engaged over time. And in case you're wondering, yes, that is my mom. And I also thank you very much to our scientific team. Um, our PI is Sam Gambier, our co-PI I think is here, Ken Mahaffey. And we have this incredible staff that works dedicated every day to make those 12 hours really engaging and important for our participants. And they're out here in the lobby. Um, and so if you have any questions about, about the studies or the measures that we're collecting, they'd be happy to tell you a little bit more about the study. And thank you very much. <laughs>